This is the Horse Radio Network. This is episode 95 of the Dressage Radio Show, brought to you with the generous support of Kentucky Performance Products, Equestrian Collections, and Equisketch. I'm Chris Stafford, and on the show this week, Gunter Seidel, Sarah Lysa, and my co-host, Mary Lauritsen. Hi, Mary. Hi, Chris. How are you doing? I'm doing good. I uh, hear you had quite a weekend last week, and we're really looking forward to the Masters. Was it everything it promised to be? Oh, yes. It was a wonderful competition, um, probably better than it was a couple, uh, last year. It was a really wonderful event. So you're going to tell us more about that a little bit uh, later on in the show. How's uh, Florida been treating you in the, since we last had you on the show? Florida's well, been treating me very well. We've had beautiful weather. It's, another, it's supposed to be another hot weekend down here in the high 80s, so no complaining about that. And the horses are loving it, but unfortunately the end is near. I, I am already hearing uh, words of packing up to head back north in a couple of weeks, which is a little bit depressing. But um, it has been great, and I've been able to attend some great horse shows, and training, again, is going very well. And um, I also tried my hand at a couple of new sports over the last couple of weeks. I actually took a polo lesson and a barrel racing lesson yesterday, believe it or not. Wow, how did that go? <laughs> it was great. Um, again, I've always been a little uh, dodge person from the very beginning and have never tried my hand at a different sports, so it was an exciting opportunity. Um, I'm lucky that at, at our barn it's kind of an eclectic mix of horses. We have a string of polo ponies here um, that are owned by the farm owner, and then uh, the owner's daughter does both barrel racing and dressage, and so I had always said, Haley, I'd really love to take a barrel racing lesson. And so she put me on one of her painted horses yesterday and showed me the ropes, and it was a whole lot of fun. Well, I was going to say, hopefully you had the horse for the job. You weren't trying to cross-train your horses. <laughs> no, no way. I don't think I could get Rosie anywhere near those big, red, scary barrels. And, and it was fun, and you stayed in the saddle, I hope. Yeah, I had one close call when the horse, like, really ripped around one of the girls, but um, it was great. It was so much fun. Very different than what I'm used to. And how about the polo? Oh, the polo? That was, again, much harder than I expected. I felt the same way about both sports, so I appreciate both sports, and I've watched enough of both. I really didn't know what to expect as far as um, how much I'd be hurting the next day. I... I could hardly feel my right arm the next day after swinging that polo mallet around. That, but um, it was a lot harder to hit that ball. I thought I was more coordinated than I actually am. <laughs> yeah, it is a challenge. It's one thing to be galloping alongside that ball, but when it comes to swinging the mallet and actually hitting it down the pitch, that's, yeah. that's something else, isn't it? It's, uh, it's fast yeah, it really and is. exciting sport. Yes, it so, was great. It was very fun to try. So no converts yet then we're not going to lose you from dressage anytime soon no no i definitely set my mind straight that yeah dressage is for me that's my sport <laughs> i'm sure ross is uh, pleased to hear that too yeah he was giving me the eye as i walked by on uh the painted one yesterday he was looking at me like mom what are you doing <laughs> why are you riding that over? <laughs> so he was very happy that we actually worked on dressage after that and what about competitions what have you been doing with him well, I haven't taken him out just yet. I've um, been trying to figure out what I want to do. Um, as I've mentioned on other shows, I am aging out as young riders and making my debut in the open classes. And it, I'm hoping that I can get him out um, at one of the shows here before you leave, most likely the Equestrian Estate show held here in White Fences. And we will probably be going out PSG and I won. Okay. And when is that? In a, a couple of weeks? Is That'll that? be... Yeah, within the next couple of weeks. It's, that particular show is the first weekend of April. Perfect. Good. Yeah, well, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, oh, and I'm sure you're taking advantage of the, the sand and the surf, are you, while you're there? Oh, I, I have had one beach day so far. My mom and I hit up the West Palm Beach a 
couple days ago on my day off and caught some rays, and it was really lovely to um, see sand that wasn't dressage arena sand for a change. <laughs> Well, I know there's a lot of dressage riders enjoying the Florida sunshine and all the competitions that take place down there. So we're going to be touching on the Masters. We're going to hear, as I said, from Sarah Lysa uh, in a little bit. Uh, But before we get to that and hear what you thought of the Masters, Mary, I want to remind our listeners about Kentucky Performance Products. Because when horsemen were asked what they were looking for in a nutritional supplement, the answer was easy. One that's affordable, effective and scientifically proven. Kentucky Performance Products took that message to heart and developed supplements to meet those needs. All of their supplements, from Nalox Equine Antacid to Summer Games Electrolytes and Joint Armor, are formulated based on sound research. The important thing is that you can count on them to deliver results, and they're affordable, so to choose the right KPP supplement for your horse, visit kppusa.com or call 1-800-772-1988. And to learn more about horse nutrition and interact with the KPP experts, be sure to join their Facebook page. Well, Mary, a big experience for you to um, watch so many of the top Grand Prix riders in the world compete at the Masters. What were your impressions of the classes leading up to the freestyle? Well, I did sit through for for the entire Grand Prix on uh, Friday, that was, or was it Thursday? I believe that was Thursday. Um, and it was great. Uh, a lot of these riders I've seen before in competition, um, but then there are also some that I haven't. Um, it was really wonderful to see uh, Tina Konyet, for example, come out with Collecto. They were definitely on top of their game. That was probably the best that I've ever seen that horse go, and I think she felt the same way. She remarked that the horse was really on his game and um, was giving him – everything that she wanted and that she was trying to improve um, each time that she takes him out, as we all are, and I think that she really brought brought home um, a great test. Um, of course, the highlight, I would say, was of that, that particular day was Stefan's ride. Um, he came home on top that day with the Grand Prix, and, uh, and that was, Ravel looked so relaxed. Of all the horses in the class, he was just he knew what he was doing, and he couldn't be more relaxed throughout the test. And um, the third rider of that day that uh, was Tina, uh, I'm probably going to trip over her name, <laughs> the, the Swedish rider, um, uh, yeah. she also had a lovely test. I actually had never watched her go before, and um, she's based here in Florida now. Um, and that horse was another one, um, favorite. He was just another incredible horse. So it was really a, a nice lineup. Um, and there was, some, again, I mentioned that there were some riders that I hadn't seen before. Um, and one that I was very excited to watch was Valentina Truppa from Italy um, because she's just coming into the Grand Prix. I think this might be her second year in the Grand Prix. Um, she was uh, the world, the Young Rider World Cup uh, champion for a number of years in a row. And so it was really neat to see her come out, um, you know, fresh out as young riders and already um, making great strides. And it was also her first time in the U.S. So it was great to see that pair as well. Um, but overall, it was a very enjoyable experience to see it. And not only were the tests great, but um, having competed at the Jim Brandon Equestrian Center, they, I know I had heard beforehand how they were planning on transforming this place, and they absolutely did. They had it styled after Provence, and it was um, just a really beautiful venue. They did an incredible job transforming it for both of the evenings. Well, I, I know that uh, there was a good crowd. It was uh, a sold-out crowd for the freestyle, and we're going to hear your thoughts on the freestyle in just a moment. But first of all, we're going to get Sarah Lyser on the line here. Sarah Lyser is a journalist with the Chronicle of the Horse. She's been on the show before. She covers a lot of their dressage competitions, and she was down there to report for the Chronicle. So we wanted to get her thoughts on uh, on the show from a journalist's point of view. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Chris. I hear you had a fun weekend down at Palm Beach for the Masters. How did it go? It was really fun. That event is always such a special dressage show. You know, it's it's so unique in the United States, and they did a really wonderful job pulling it together a bit at the last minute at the Jim Brandon Center, so it was a, a great, great weekend. Well, take us from the top there, from the Grand Prix, how it all unfolded, Sarah. 
Uh, sure. Well, you know, Stefan Peters obviously came in with a with a big advantage. Um, there's only a few horses in the world that have been able to beat Ravel, and I think everyone expected that that he would do well in the Grand Prix. And I mean, he just knocked it out of the park. He really he came out swinging and everything looked fantastic. The horse, you know, his highlights have always been things like his passage, his piaf, his half passes, and those were gorgeous. But, you know, just Stefan is such a perfectionist and he keeps refining everything more and more to make it, you know, a, a wonderful picture. The horse is looking a lot better and look fitter now is what, is what I was hearing. Did, did that give you, did he give you that appearance? I would say that I feel like, not that the horse has, has ever looked unconfident, but it does take a year or two of, of Grand Prix performance. And, and I just feel like they're at the point where Stefan just can totally trust Ravel to to do his job and he can ask for more everywhere in the test, not just in the highlights. But, um, you know, and, and I'm sure that has to do with strength as well. I know they've been working really hard on Ravel's fitness. So I'm sure that the strength just gives him a little more stamina to do things, you know, to ask a bit more from the horse. And tell us about the other combinations that went well. Of course, uh, our Polish friend, Mikel, he was he went really well and went under his belt. He did, and that is such a neat story. Um, Mikel, there aren't many dressage riders coming out of Poland, obviously, and he does keep his horses in Belgium, but he spends a great deal of his time in in Poland, and um, he was is such a phenomenal story. That horse started as a an event horse that wouldn't stop, that that was not readable on cross country. Um, and so, who would have thought that he would then go on to become this you know fantastic Grand Prix horse that's competed in the Olympics? He's competed in the World Equestrian Games. He's done, I believe, three World Cup finals now. Um, you know, and and he just came out in the Grand Prix special, and the horse looked more more confident, and and Mikhail looked more confident, and I think they, you know, had really found their feet now in in, in Wellington, and he could not say enough wonderful things about Florida. At the end of the show, he said, you know, I I think I've found where I want to live now. Somebody needs to to set me up in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and obviously coming from Poland in the middle of the winter, I'm pretty sure that South Florida looks uh, like paradise in comparison. I can well imagine, yeah. And of course, you were speaking to him in Polish and translating this into English for us, right? <laughs> no, not exactly. <laughs> um, his, his English is, is great, and he was just, he was so enthusiastic. It turned out that um, the Thursday of the Grand Prix was his birthday, and so he said, you know, I've just had such a wonderful time here. Everyone sang me happy birthday. I won the Grand Prix special. You know, it's every rider's goal, I think, to win a class at the, at the World Dressage Masters, especially with the phenomenal prizes they offer. Certainly made his trip worthwhile, and as you say, he won the Grand Prix special. He beat uh, Pierre Saint-Jacques with Lucky Tiger and Sean Harding in third place, who's been on the mm-hmm. show recently. The um, Grand Prix started off with a win for Stefan, as uh, Sarah said, and at second place, Tina Cognot and Collector. How did he look? Uh, this Is this one of his um, early outings? He's, I know he's been out before, but this would be his biggest class since uh, the World Games, Sarah. Yeah, Collector looked fantastic. I, um, I saw him last the week previously at the Palm Beach Dressage Derby, and they just had a, an off show, and that can happen with horses. They come out, and especially a stallion. Tina really didn't know why, but he came back at the World Dressage Masters and put in um, probably the best Grand Prix test I've seen him do. Um, you know, I wasn't at Aachen when, when he went and competed there last summer, but that horse, again, another horse that's just really getting confirmed in the Grand Prix now, and um, you know, there are always things to work on and improve, but he has such phenomenal energy and, um, you know, he just lifts off the ground. It's really fun to see. And in third place there, Tina Wilhelmsen Silverson. She's had a fantastic uh, tour so far down in Wellington, and she came in third in the Grand Prix with Favorite. So I, I think she's uh, just enjoying herself as much as uh, Mikel was down there. Yeah, Tina is so wonderful. She's ridden in five Olympic Games, and she ended up with this opportunity to come to Florida for three months. And she's so humble. I mean, she has won everything, every CDI mm-hmm. she's entered with both horses. And 
you know, she just keeps saying, I'm doing this for my own education and for my horse's education. Um, and her horse favorite, that horse has had a bit, he's been a bit hot, a bit tense. And she said that the experience of showing him a lot without having to get him on a trailer, you know, when you're in Sweden, obviously the horse shows aren't all that close together. Mm-hmm. So he's been able to just show a lot and relax in between the shows. And she said, you know, he's really, his routine, he's really found his routine in the Grand Prix. And, and he showed that so well in the in the freestyle where he finished second. Because um, this is a horse that Tina said it was, used to be afraid of his freestyle music. <laughs> That's extraordinary. And so... <laughs> what did he know, do if he was afraid of it? it she it, just... You know, she said he got very tense and very concerned about it. And you could actually see that in the prize-giving ceremonies. He really didn't enjoy that very much. Oh. But, um, you know, he the the World Dressage Masters was the closest thing to an indoor show, I think, that we, we saw in Wellington this season or in, in South Florida. They put um, big banners around to kind of close it in a bit more. And it was a full house and the audience was excited and the music was loud. And that horse favorite just, you know, you could tell he really had confidence in his rider and confidence in what he was doing out there. And he put in a beautiful test. Well, things just turned around for those uh, second and third places in the freestyle. Then I believe there was quite an atmosphere, a sold out crowd there in the Jim Brandon arena how, how I'm sure you enjoyed the evening to have that kind of field of, of competitors to watch. How did it shake down? What were your views on the on those final placings and of course the record score of uh, Stefan's eighty four point five three? Um, it was a really fun evening. Um, the the thanks to the Palm Beach Polo, um, they I think a lot of the the International Polo Club members were there and they were the presenting sponsor and they had a phenomenal catered event. It really was, it, it really felt like a, you know, a night in Provence, which was, I think the, um, the theme, the, I think the riders for the riders, it was a little bit tough the way it is. Anytime that you have a lot of spectators close to the ring, indoor atmosphere, you could see the horses getting a bit lit up. Um, mm-hmm. and that was true for Ravel also that the, you know, kind of a, a funny thing for, Stefan is, he's come out, this is his third World Dressage Masters, and he has won the Grand Prix test on the first day every time. And then in the freestyle, the horse gets a bit lit up, and, and he did again. And he had a couple of just small errors where Ravel said, I really want to go. <laughs> <laughs> um, but but Stefan is such a good rider and so understanding of his horse. And, and Ravel, obviously, they have a wonderful relationship, and he wanted, as soon as he... You know, he made a little mistake, and then he said, oh, oh, I know, I'm supposed to do my job. And he went right back to work showing off his, you know, phenomenal gates and movement. And it wasn't a tense test. There were just a couple of moments where you could really see that the atmosphere, he, he had noticed the atmosphere. And how did Popart look? Of course, Ashley Holzer from Canada and Popart were fourth, both after the Grand Prix and the freestyle there. How did he look to you? Um, Poppy is so consistent and that horse of all the horses in, you know, that horse really enjoys that kind of atmosphere. A little, um, electricity just makes him perform better. He, so, you know, he came out, he did his job. He's a lovely, lovely animal. I did see he had one little uncharacteristic thing in his freestyle where Ashley must have just had a miscue and, and he didn't pee off and then suddenly he went, oh, I'm sorry, and, and jumped right back into pee off for her. Uh, but, you know, that's just a wonderful combination to see. It's such a fan club. There were signs around the arena. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. Very, very popular combination. And, of course, um, the other horse that uh, comes from the World Equestrian Games team is Todd Fletcherich with Otto. How, how did they look now at the start of the season? Uh, this is the first time I've seen Otto come out, and uh, the impression I got was that he was trying very, very hard. Um, you know, they still, they, I think their Grand Prix test might have been a bit better than their freestyle. The, And again, and maybe the atmosphere just lit the horse up a little bit. I'm not really sure. I didn't actually speak to Todd. Uh, I think he was pleased with his test, though, and, and just pleased with the effort that that horse was giving him. So all in all, a great weekend of competition. And as you said, the organizers there at the Jim Brandon Arena have put on a marvelous uh, show for the world. 
and Absolutely. I and, and as you said, set the scene with that uh, Provence uh, atmosphere in the in the in the covered arena there. And I understand they did some work on the footing too. What did they do? Oh, the footing is was. I just heard raving about the footing all weekend. They did replace all the footing in the covered arena, and they did it um, outdoors as well and in the warm-up. And it's a fiber footing. It has initials. It has three initials, G something. Uh, and but, they, but, they, but it went down well with the riders. That's the main thing. Yes, that's the main thing. The riders, actually, Stefan said that they had come and checked it out sort of the week before he and Jim Wolf at the USCF had just, just to make sure that it would be okay and turned out that he the riders had no complaints it's um i've found it now it's german geotextile footing okay ggt and it's something that is used premier equestrian i think was was responsible for putting that down at the jim brandon center and that's going to make that you know these kinds of events there are just going to make this this public facility so much more popular and get so much more recognition. I mean, that's a facility that's used for all sorts of things. Terrific. Well, as you said, they're on now that's uh, <clears throat> the end of uh, our flavor of the World Dressage Masters as it moves back to Europe. Um, as you said, it's it's a great competition, Sarah, and I'm sure uh, you enjoyed a bit of Florida for a while. That's, uh, how many times have you been down there now? This, uh, this <laughs> That was my third trip to the Wellington, West Palm Beach area. Um, I went down a little bit earlier in the season, actually just to have a bit of a vacation, which was a silly idea, um, because I just ended up going to the horse shows anyway. (laughs) (laughs) But but, um, I have, you know, I've made a number of friends who are there now, and and it's good. It was good to be there and just be able to see them without the pressure of trying to cover an event as well. And then I was there for the Palm Beach Dressage Derby, which is always just one of my favorite horse shows over in Loxahatchee. Mm-hmm. And then I came back for the World Dressage Masters. So certainly got my uh, fill of South Florida this winter. Well, good. And I know while you were at the Derby, you saw our friend here on the Dressage Radio Show. Well, we call him HRH Paragon now, Heather Blitz's <laughs> horse. Uh, you you got to look at him. I was thrilled to get a look at him because I have to say the photos of him do not do him justice. He's obviously a big, tall horse with, with lots of room to put muscle on. He's only, what, he's turning eight this year? Mm-hmm. Um, and seeing him in motion was a totally different story. He just, he floats across the ground, uh, and he gives such an impression of elasticity and power, and I, and I can't wait to see him a year from now, two years from now. And that's what the judges said to me as well. Is you know, uh, Axel Steiner just said this horse is kind of loafing through the um, the small tour. It's easy for him, and so everyone, you know, we don't, nobody wants to rush him, but everyone wants to see what this horse will look like at Grand Prix. Absolutely. Very exciting for Team USA, the prospects that we have. And I know Stefan's got a new horse as well that uh, he's campaigning that uh, would be another candidate, hopefully, for the team. Yeah, Valtino's Magic, um, a horse that his wife Shannon brought up through the ranks, actually. Mm-hmm. But yeah, our, our Pan Am team looking very, very strong. And that, that was another thing that Mr. Steiner said to me was, that we have to, we really need to look at our small tour ranks right now. And, you know, our Grand Prix is kind of, obviously we have some great Grand Prix combinations led by Stefan Peters and Ravel, but, but it's the small tour where the, the next Grand Prix horses are going to come from. And, you know, it just looks like a very bright future for us right now. Well, that's great, Sarah. Very exciting. Well, we appreciate the chronicle of, a, of the horse and their support of the Horse Radio Network as ever. And I know your colleagues come on our shows every week, so we have to keep getting you back to fill us in on what's happening in the dressage world. Well, it's fun to be here, and you can you know, tell, tell your listeners that they can find all kinds of information on our website, www.cronofhorse.com. You bet. We always put a link on our website to cronofhorse.com. You can find that at dressageradio.com. And I want to thank Sarah again for giving us a roundup of the World Dressage Masters. Thank you so much for joining us, Sarah. Thank you, Chris, for having me on. It was a pleasure. 
Well, Mary, the freestyle, of course, was the highlight of the weekend. How did you view that from a rider's perspective? Well, the music choices, there were a lot of the same music choices. Any of the riders have been using the same music for the last few years, but there was also a few surprises tucked in there. Um, I have to say that my favorite of all, though, she placed second for, or placed third for the evening, uh, was uh, Tina Sylvain from Sweden. Um, she she had incredible music. I mean, it it really stood out amongst all of the riders that were in the freestyle. It was very inventive, um, and especially for those who um, did watch this test, whether you watched it online or there in person, she had the most interesting canter music, probably um, probably the most unique canter music that I've ever seen. It was very neat within the transition um, from walk to canter, I believe, is what she did. Um, it actually started with hoofbeats over the loud speaker and it, it was hoofbeats and then it turned into this drum and it just built upon each other and it was just it was just a really well composed freestyle so for me that really stood out um and you know of course we had the the unfortunate uh elimination of um uh Anya Polenska with um Le Mans d'Or and that was very unfortunate you could you could see that one coming unfortunately um so that was That was definitely too bad and a surprise given how um, well she's been doing with the Master Series. Um, But other than that, you know, you had your other riders, again, that used uh, the same music they've been using for the last few years, but everybody is, you know, just tightening up their freestyles. And Tina Konyat and Stefan both did that. I think that they both remarked that this is their their best freestyle to date. Um, Stefan had a couple little slip-ups, and he did an incredible job getting himself back on track. In fact, um, I've watched that test a number of times with Rizal, and uh, so I pretty much know the choreography, and I was very surprised because he, he switched it up, and I think it was due to a small mistake, and he just did a beautiful job of saving, saving the freestyle and changing the movements around a little bit, and you would have never known that he uh, improvised a bit there in the test. Um, I think that the only, uh, the unfortunate thing for all the freestyles was that the music was bouncing a little bit on the sound system. Um, of course, Jim Brennan, that clustering facility had so much to uh, juggle that uh, maybe their sound system just needed a little bit of improvements because at times the music that had the very heavy bass was kind of bouncing off of the walls there. Um, if you haven't seen Jim Brandon, it's um, a covered arena that has been uh, built. So occasionally that would happen, but overall uh, it was a really beautiful night. And like you said, it was sold out. The crowd um, was very excited, and it was just, again, a very well put together show. I, I was very impressed and happy to see that um, us Americans could bring on such a great competition. Well, exciting indeed, and of course, uh, that music by Coldplay and the Rolling Stones, I believe, while it's been a, a trademark of this uh, combination in its freestyle, mm. apparently that's going to be the last time that Stefan's going to use that music. And I should also say right. that Stefan would have liked to have come on the show this week, but uh, I got a text from him today saying he's got 65 horses at home, and so he wasn't going to be able to join us uh, this week. But we will, of course, try and get Stefan on another time. But um, obviously doing extremely well, getting the horse back in really excellent form at the beginning of this season. So congratulations to to Stefan and Ravel and, of course, Akiko, the owner, and all the connections of, of Ravel. Very exciting start to uh, this winter season and, of course, the summer season. And a, a, a great event altogether. I think uh, uh, everyone will be very pleased at hosting the Masters down there. Well, I'm just going to remind you now about the equestrian collections before we get to uh, Dressage Affair. That was the other uh, event that was taking place this week. Big show on the West Coast, of course. Um, But before we talk about uh, Dressage Affair, I want to remind you that equestrian collections are our valued sponsors here. And, of course, if you've started to dig out your show clothing and equipment for the spring season, you might find that, that some of it's finally beyond repair. Well, there's an easy option to that problem with a visit to equestriancollections.com. They have the latest in spring and show clothing for you, your spouse, and your kids at prices you can afford. Not only do they have a great selection, great prices, and a state-of-the-art website, that is what you get for looking to Equestrian Collections first for all your spring and showing needs. So please visit equestriancollections.com. 
Well, as I said, the West Coast had their own big event this weekend, big show, Dressage Affair at CDI over in Del Mar. And uh, Jan, uh, Jan Ebeling won the CDI <clears throat> W Grand Prix on Rafelka on a score of 69.596 over Sue Blinks on Robin Hood and Gunter Seidel and U2. And Ebeling also won the Prix Saint-Georges and the Intermediate one on Sandrina and Rosenzalbad 8, respectively. Shannon Peters uh, kept up the uh, the Peters winning run by topping the Grand Prix special with Odyssey on a score of 66.25. And Gunter Seidel and U2 went on to win the freestyle on 70. 70- 1.9 ahead of Jan Ebeling and Rafalka on 71.675 and Sue Blinks with Robin Hood on 69.875 and in the I1 freestyle Karen Pavicic came first with Don Dakari and third on London Z so congratulations to Karen and there will be a link of course on our website to the full results from Dressage Affair and I was able to catch up with Gunter Seidel of course he's making his comeback to the show ring this is his first competition since he had that awful fall last year in Germany and on you, off of YouTube when he actually broke his pelvis so uh, it was very much fun to catch up with Gunter and uh, hear about his start to the season well hi Gunter Hi, hey Chris. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Congratulations on what a f- fantastic comeback to the show ring. Well, thank you. It was fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, as I said in my introduction, not only did you get two wins there, uh, one with Sunday Boy in, <clears throat> in the Prix Saint-Georges and uh, also you two in the Grand Prix and the freestyle. Uh, very, very satisfying to come back and have those kind of results, Gunter. How how are you feeling, first of all, before we talk about the horses? I'm feeling quite well. I'm definitely still recuperating in many ways and doing a lot of therapy. And I'm not necessarily pain-free, but I can write quite well and um, uh, feel like I can give at least the time I'm in the ring 100%. So I'm still a little careful around that I don't ride a lot of horses at home. So in that aspect, I'm not back to full work but I feel confident enough that I can compete Are you having to do therapy still or other sports to get strong, Gunter? Yeah, I do twice a week with a trainer therapy and then almost every day by myself something else And and I think I saw some photographic evidence of you surfing, is that right? Yeah, but <laughs> surfing is, is not a <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, sitting on the surfboard itself is actually quite a good exercise because you kind of supple, have to supple in your hips, and it's not a big impact sport surfing unless you crash and burn. Which, um, <laughs> I'm being careful. I'm not surfing 10 foot waves. So um, I, I surf right now the smaller waves, and I'm a little cautious about it. And, you know, something can happen with anything, but you can walk across the street and get run over. So um, in that way, I think the surfing actually is almost therapeutic. Well, I'd imagine it's also pretty strengthening, good for the balance too. I mean, with your, you know, yeah. to balance your hips, yes. your pelvis, isn't it? No, that's what I'm saying. It is, it is, I need, I need to build up strength. I mean, yes, you do hurt, but after that, that kind of a layup and surgeries, um, you're not going to get back into a sport without hurting. It's just, I'm having it monitored. I'm, you know, I have doctors and, and therapists who, who kind of help me along and you, you kind of, end up feeling and knowing what is kind of okay and good kind of pain or okay kind of pain and what is too much and you shouldn't be doing. You learn in the process a little bit what what you can do and not do and you should do and not do. I, I, can, so. I can well imagine and also the, the, the pain threshold. You said you still have some pain. Do you have some pain when, when you're really schooling a horse and, and, and then in competition, Gunther? Sometimes, yes. As often it's a little worse getting off the horse than on the horse, right after I get off the horse, I have to say. Um, and I have to say, the, once I warm up and the competition itself, you always have a little bit of a adrenaline going, and you you know how that goes. You kind of forget about the pain at that moment. So um, I think it's all fairly controllable and, and in the normal range of what, what, do you, what someone 
can and should ha- should be able to handle. Well, clearly you felt ready to compete again. And how how did that go? I mean, obviously the results speak for themselves, but how was the whole process for you to ride, you know, each day? You have Friday, Saturday and Sunday in competition. So yeah. that's a lot more intense than just schooling at home. Right. You know, yeah, you can just take a little walk break when you feel like you need <laughs> You need it. Mm-hmm. So um, I, I showed on Friday, I showed Sunday, but first, which was great, it was the first time I showed that horse. So I had no idea how he was going to be in the in the ring, and I was very pleasantly surprised. He was quite fun to ride, and uh, it's, it's a very exciting horse. So I'm thrilled about him, and I'm going to go on with him and do a couple of CDIs, and he could actually move up to Grand Prix by the end of the year already. Wow. Um, Tell us about him, um, uh, Sunday Boy. Where where did you find him? How old is he? I found him a little bit old. He's 11 already. I found him a bit over a year ago in Holland. And then when I had him, he got a slight injury and had to be laid up for a few months. And we actually decided, because we couldn't quite pinpoint it, it was a little odd. It wasn't very severe, but we just put him in pasture for a few months and let him be. And then brought him slowly, slowly back. So that's why... It's kind of all a little bit delayed, and um, he's he's never shown Grand Prix, but he kind of does all of the Grand Prix stuff at home already, and I feel pretty confident that he can move up fairly quick to the Grand Prix. So that was obviously a wonderful result for him to to win that with yeah. a seventy four point four seven four. Yeah, that was very, very exciting. Very, so, very flashy horse. Did you have the horse under you that you thought you would coming into that competition then? And, and was that not too much of a surprise for you, that 74? Mm, a little bit. I thought he would have been a little more difficult in the ring itself because he's a little bit of a harder horse and um, a little, he can be a little tricky around. And I thought he might be like this in the ring, but... And you know what? I sh- this is the first time showing. It, it might change, and maybe the next time he'll be a little more difficult. But he was very straightforward and solid to ride in the ring. I have to say, very, very businesslike and just doing his job and going around. But like I say, it, things like this can change too. The next time he could be a little more difficult, or something could spook him, or I don't know. But so far, so good. Well, you've obviously reaffirmed your relationship with you too, and he's being nice to you now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's being nice. I mean, he's always been a spooky horse, and that's that was a little bit of pre wasn't that great because it's quite a, it can be quite a difficult arena at at the Dressage Affair. It's in the, in the indoor in a covered arena, and everything is a little close by, and that's not not the optimal place for him to start a show actually. But it's such a nice big city eyes. I didn't want to miss that, and. I knew he was going to be a little difficult the first day, and it was the first day for me him, with him back in the ring, and he hasn't shown for almost a year. So it was a little tense and a little... We had some mistakes and some little issues in the Grand Prix, and um, then the second day for the freestyle, he was... I, from the from the right ability and everything, he was a lot more through and with me, and um, now he's at to right, and we just had one little here and there, but nothing too bad. So um, I felt all good about coming back with him. It felt all quite good. So a nice 71.9 there to to win that uh, freestyle, Gunther. Yeah. Have you have you got a an understanding with with him now? Does does he realise what's expected and what's not expected of you of him? <laughs> you mean in the way of behaviour? Yes. <laughs> um, you know, I have to I have to come to his defense. Um, <laughs> he, it's really not an nasty horse. I've said that before in, in interviews and stuff. This horse, I've ridden him since he was three, four years old, and he had never backed a rear before in his whole life. Never, you know. And that was the only time. And it was really a freak kind of accident. So it's not his nature to back. It really isn't. So... It's nothing I expect him to do. I'm obviously a little more cautious in certain situations now where I knew it could happen, but it's it's in general not in his nature to do something that bad. I mean, he can spook and, and jump around a little bit, but nothing really to get uh, anyone who can ride a little bit into big trouble. Uh, and he, is he patient with you when you get on and particularly when you get off now? No, he's not a patient kind of horse. <laughs> 
she sells perks. <laughs> <laughs> so after such a great start to your new season, Gunter, what do you have on your schedule now? What are the plans for the season? Um, I enter the next CBI. It's in about three weeks in Los Angeles. And then we have another big CDI down here in Dalmar at the fairgrounds again in probably a month, in six, seven weeks or so. And if that both goes, goes well and the horse does well and I'm feeling good with my health, um, I probably will try to go to Europe again to compete. Back to Germany. Yes. Mm-hmm. So have some uh, summer months then over there in, in Germany. And who would you take apart from you two? Would it just be him or would you take Sunday Boy too for the small tour? I would, I would take Sunday Boy along, yes. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Well, terrific. Well, we wish you the very best of luck with your summer plans, Gunter, and delighted that you've made such a wonderful start back in the show ring. I mean, it could not be more satisfactory. Well, thank you, Chris. That's very nice. And uh, we will catch up with you later in the summer and make sure that you stay on the right side of the surfboard in the meantime. (laughs) I'll make sure of that. Thank you. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) Okay, bye-bye. Well, that has to be, you know, one of those things when you're coming back from an in, any injury at all, Mary, it's it's always tough, isn't it? I mean, you know yourself from the injury you had, the recovery and then getting back in the show ring, it's one of life's challenges if you're in the sport. It definitely is, and it, it's such a long process, but to actually get back in the show ring, it's so wonderful to see that Gunter's there and he's he's doing well and he's winning and it's really a great feat to be able to recover from something, um, an injury that um, really is that, uh, that puts that kind of effect on your life. I mean, it, it really does set you back, but he's proving that it's possible to get back in the saddle and do as well as he's doing. And, and you're absolutely 100% fit, are you now, Mary? I am, yeah. I, have, I don't have any sort of um, relapses or I, I don't feel uh, any pain at all. Um, so I am 100% back, back to my old self. Terrific. Very fortunate. Very Good. fortunate for that. Yes, absolutely. Well, great. Well, we're just about coming to the end of the show here this week, but before we go, I want to remind you that Equisketch, one of our sponsors, is a great new company dedicated to providing the best mobile apps for every rider. Each app has been designed to be used by riders of all ages and all levels of experience. With Equisketch Dressage, you can replace your dressage paper or dry erase boards and begin learning all your dressage tests on your iPhone or iPad. The Equisketch board allows you to study in a flashcard style by hiding the step instructions while visualizing your location in the arena. Every test can also be viewed in a written format and later shared with your dressage students or fellow riders. Equisketch Records allows you to manage all your horses and shows on the go. Track every medication, vet visit, dental exam, farrier work and more, complete with built-in reminders. Equisketch has some of best-selling equestrian apps on the iTunes App Store, which have already been purchased in over 35 countries. They are available for the iPhone, iPad and iPod Touch. Visit equisketch.com slash hrn for more information or search Equisketch in iTunes. Equisketch, dedicated to making your equestrian life mobile one app at a time. Have you tried it, Mary? I have. I played around with Equisketch on my iPhone, and I think it is one of the coolest apps out there. Um, <laughs> it, it is such a neat thing, and um, though I haven't uh, used it to really design a freestyle yet, I have played with the uh, freestyle um, uh, little platform that they have on there, and that it's a lot of fun to play with and definitely useful. Very good. All right. Well, you know how we love all our gimmicks here on the uh, Horse Radio Network. We're all for these uh, n- these new media tools and tricks. So, uh, yes. yeah, yeah, we'll re- certainly recommend that one, equisketch.com. Well, I also have a nice surprise for you. If you heard le- last week's show, you'll know that we're going to be teasing this and promoting this appearance that's coming up on the Dressage Radio Show next month. So let's hear from our guest who's going to be coming on. This is Courtney Dye, and I'm looking forward to being on the Dressage Radio Show next month. I know you have all been following me all along, so I wanted to tell you everything that's going on with me because you've been so supportive. I'm on 
Well, we are certainly looking forward to that because Courtney is undoubtedly unstoppable. Well, Mary, that just about wraps it up this week. I want to remind all our listeners that the notes can be found on dressageradio.com. You can visit our Facebook fan page, of course. You can go to chris at horseradionetwork.com and send me an email. You can also follow me on Twitter at Chrissy Stafford or Horse Radio. And Mary, as well, is a tw- will tweet away quite happily at Mary <laughs> Dressage. You're, you're a big tweeter, aren't you, Mary? You love it. <laughs> Oh, I love it. It's very addicting, and um, I'm tweeting uh, multiple times a day, so you can find me on there. (laughs) All right, Mary, so what's in store for you now in the last two weeks before you leave Florida? Uh, Well, I can tell you that I'm really dreading going back home. Uh, I've only heard horror stories about the weather up there and that the snow is slowly melting and uh, spring's just taking extra long to hit Massachusetts this year. So I do hope that it will be nice by the time I get there. But in the meantime, I'm just going to continue my training with Roz Ignall and um, enjoy time with friends and enjoy the sun. Absolutely. Well, good. Well, enjoy the bit of beach time that you have left. I will, of course, be back here, same place, same time next week. So until then, thank you all for listening. 